Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and I'm here talking today about a technique. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this technique is because I thought it was so awesome. And let me tell you what the problem was. Okay, so years, well, a few years back, I was trying to make a ribbed scarf and I only had one skein and it was this Zen Garden yarn that it's a Serenity 20 with a little bit of glitter in it, Stellina. And I didn't have enough yarn to make it into a full scarf. So I wanted to join it together and make it into a cowl, right? So what I did with this is I did a three needle bind off. And if you look at the back on here, the three needle bind off gives you a bump that garter ridge on top. And if you look really closely on the other side, it doesn't exactly match. So then I did another scarf that was doing ribbing and I thought, I'm gonna figure this out. So I spent like four hours trying to figure out how to seam it so it looks invisible. <laughs> and I never could figure it out. I ended up taking the scarf out and it was once again one of those things where I only had a small amount of yarn, so I thought I'd make it into a cowl instead of a scarf. And I had done a provisional cast on. I could never get it to look right. So then, Tara, who works here, she was doing a sweater. And her sweater had, it had ribbing. Um, so say it had ribbing, you see how this sweater that I have here, it's one of mine from home, it had ribbing on the edges going up along this side. And um, then when you got to the center of the back, you had to join it, much like this piece is joined right here. But if you see, if you do it, join it, you can easily get a seam in one spot or another right here where it's joined and when you roll your collar back it doesn't look that great right that that's it, what you would see so lots of people are coming online so. good morning everyone it's nice to have you with me and i know this seems like a silly little thing that i'm talking about but i was so thrilled when i found this solution to my problem that I had to share it with you. I don't know if you've ever had this problem or you've ever had to join two pieces of ribbing together, but it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> Especially if you wanna make it so it looks really good, right? So anyway, that was my dilemma. How to take two pieces of a fabric. Now on the ribbing, the ribbing is gonna be joined together like this. So your one by one ribbing is gonna meet. And so I had to figure out the solution to that problem, right? So um, anyway, Tara, I was trying to help her with their sweater and she had done her ribbing all up one side and all the way up to the other. And we had two needles that were meeting together and we were trying to get it to look as seamless as we could so that when the collar was rolled back, it looked good, right? And um, it was for one of her family members. So then, I, after I had figured out how difficult it is, I started looking at the sweaters that I have in my closet, right? And this sweater is, you see how they have knit the, the whole thing, and then they go back and they um, do the edging after the other part is done, right? And so um, I think there's a reason for that because joining the ribbon, ribbing is not as easy as it looks. Here's another little shruggy thing that I have. And again, the ribbing was put on after the project was knit. Pretty cool, huh? So, anyway, so I had this problem, how to get it to join, much like I did here on this, but I wanted to make it look better than this. I wanted to improve it. When I have a project, you know how picky I am. <laughs> <laughs> if it, there's an imperfection, I, my eyes zero right in on it. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone else out there is like that, but I have that problem. So I have to make it look as nice as I can make it look. For number one, I don't want to give something to someone or keep it for myself and have to adjust it so the funky side is hidden. <laughs> I just want it to be nice everywhere. And then I don't have to apologize for it. So I have my little board here, Jim. And 
You want to flip it around or? Yes, I can turn it around so you can see. And I was just looking at different ways of doing, getting the ribbing to go together, right? So this right here, basically what this is that I found, which is my ideal way to do it, it still has a nice stretch to it. And mind you, this is not blocked. It's just raw knitting that I did this morning. And it would, um, once it was blocked, it would look much better. But you can see how the knit stitches are recreated. There's very little bulk and it looks almost seamless. It looks pretty darn good, right? And that is doing the Kitchener stitch where you move the knit stitches to one double point, move the purl stitches to another double point, and then you would Kitchener it. But I'll show you that technique. Let me show you some of the other things that I looked at. So for mattress stitch, a lot of times mattress stitch is done on, not on a horizontal seam, it's done on a vertical seam, and it's mostly done for um, stockinette stitch. And so when I tried to do it in ribbing, the purl bumps were a problem. It didn't look that great. So um, I don't have the actual sample of it because I took it. it. It looked terrible. It did not look good. Then I tried my little whip stitch sample where it, the whip stitch creates a not very strong seam and you can still see your cast on and your bind off edges. Um, so I don't think that was ideal. Um, I didn't like that any better than, I probably like my three needle bind off sample better. And then um, I thought I, I had this one where I was doing duplicate stitch on the knit stitches and then I did and went over to the other side and did um, the knit stitches. Okay. See, so I, but it kind of twisted the stitches and didn't look great. But I think there's something to be said for doing this du duplicate stitch on the knit side on one and then just flipping it the other way and doing duplicate stitch. What I mean by um, that is just recreating that stitch. So if you look right here, here is the stitch right here. And I came out of that stitch, went around the stitch on the other side, and I would come back in and do that that way. And then you can flip it back the other way and do your other knit stitch on the other side. So you go back and forth um, doing that. But it wasn't, um, it still created a bulky fabric and it wasn't actually super simple. Like right here, I didn't get it, it wasn't perfect. It didn't look perfect. So, um, but I would have to experiment with that more and see if I like that. But that, that created a, if you look here, the thickness in the actual product that it produced was much thicker than my ideal sample. And um, much, uh, it was easier to see. It was more visible. So that wasn't ideal. I didn't like that too much. Um, so let me see if I can show you this little kitchener, this technique right here. Yes, oh good idea, Jim. All right, so before I do my techniques, because I get <laughs> all involved in this. So last week we had this lovely Arroyo, and if you haven't tried this sport weight yarn from Malabrigo, it's a hand dyed yarn. It's a machine washable merino, and it's beautiful. I love this Matisse blue because it's almost like electric blue. And the papyrus here was beautiful too. And it has just tonal with some black in it. Very pretty. I've used this many times. So which one was the... Um, the price, the purple one. Th this one was? Uh -huh. Ah. So our knitters like this papyrus. They liked them so, both actually. Yeah. The, I, I like the um, Matisse. I have a sweater, sweater quantity of this colorway. And I'm going to be making something with it. I love it. It's a beautiful color. So, and then for this week, we have our bamboo pop sock. And the reason why I chose this bamboo pop sock for a prize for this week is that these are a couple new colorways that we got in. And this one right here, number 506, Riptide, is kind of has purples and dusty blue and peach. It's very, very pretty. And then the other bamboo pop sock um, colorway is called 
uh, corals and it has some yellows and kind of peachy blue kind of it's pretty these are new pretty. colors right yes yeah. brand new colors that's why I wanted to have this for a price this week so you could see some of the new colors because this is a very popular yarn and it sells like wildfire so um, I really like these new colors so that's the prize for this week. And if you guys don't know about how to win for a contest, you post comments in the comment section, you share with your buddies, um, maybe you let us know where you're from, and maybe what you're knitting or crocheting, either one, because we love both, and then um, you're entered to win. And don't forget to share with your friends. Push that share button, or like, or whatever you do. <laughs> I have I'm not so computer literate, Jim is more so than myself. But okay, um, also another couple things I wanted to talk to you about before we get into our skill is that I don't know if you've ever tried these Chowgu needles. Um, there's this lovely twist set and it's the complete set and it has all the different needle sizes. And I don't, if you've ever used the Chowgu, I love the Chowgu. And the reason why I love Chowgu is these wonderful cords do not have memory, which means um, they don't wind up and stay wound up so that you can't use them. And um, you don't have to heat up the water and um, try and, uh, you know, lay, get them to lay flat and behave. They just behave right off the bat. And so this is really nice. And I love the quality of the case. The quality of this item and the needles inside are, are wonderful. Um, there's another thing with these child goo needles. They have a really nice tip, and you can use it for lace knitting or any of your regular knitting needs. And it, it's just a great needle. I've been using them a lot, right, Jim? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's one of my very, very favorite needles, which is why we carry them. And if you look at this cord that I have here, now it has a little tiny bit of a twist in it, but nothing compared to what my other needles would look like if you put them out and I, I roll them up really tight so that I can store them because I have a small bag that I use for bazillions of needles that I try to shove in there. <laughs> right, Jim? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, all right. And one more thing I wanted to tell you about these N20s. Extreme boot and socks. They're called extreme boot socks, and um, they have full terry. Have you, I don't know if you've, I've showed this to you guys or if you've seen it, but I want to show you what the inside of these puppy dogs look like. If you have cold feet, alpaca is where it's at. I mean, we literally have people come in to buy these socks and um, come back and buy tons of them. You see how they have full terry throughout? It's like a sleeping bag for your feet. <laughs> it's wonderful, made from alpaca, and it is machine washable. The only thing I'd say about that is if you're wearing your alpaca socks, because they're a bit of an investment, make sure that you um, wash them in the gentle cycle on cool water and then lay them out to dry. Do not dry them in the dryer. I always rescue them from the dryer because I want them to last for a long, long time because I never want to have to um, be without them because they're so wonderful. Anyway, so I just wanted to tell you. And then we have a, a several different colors, although we're selling out, right, Jim? But those oh, make so good gifts for people. They make excellent gifts. Do you know that I used to think, oh, socks are kind of a boring gift, but hey, then I got these socks, and I'm like, they are not a boring gift. They're the best gift on earth, I think, better than just about anything else. Because if your feet are warm, you're a happy person. And I, me, because I'm always cold, makes a huge difference in my life. Because I used to always walk around complaining. <laughs> and it's funny, because we had a gentleman over last night, and did you see him in the the weight room, Jim? No. He he was um, putting. My hubby got me a, a treadmill for Christmas, and the gentleman was putting it together, and he was sweating. <laughs> I could tell I'm sitting here thinking, "Oops, I should have remembered to turn the heat down a little bit before the game." Because he's obviously not used to the heat. All right, so I'm going over here to my ribbing, and I wanted to show you how to do this. Basically what it is is Kitchener stitch. So we're gonna look at this and we're gonna use our little sticky. You know, when I'm doing the Kitchener stitch, I always write myself a little sticky note, even though I have, I know how to do it. It just makes it easier so don't, I don't get off track, right? So let's take a look at our work here. 
So you can use either double points or any kind of needles that you want. But what you gotta do is you gotta separate knit stitches and purl stitches. And you treat each of the swatches as a separate piece of fabric, just for a second. And then I'll show you. When we get them separated, you just go back and forth, separating the knits and the purls. Hmm? Sorry, got a couple more. All right. So those are separated. So you set that off to the side, and I have a nice long tail. Even though I don't even need that much, I put that on there anyway. Let's see if we start with the knit side again. Oh. Again, I'm going to be separating my knits and pearls. And I don't really like, maybe I better turn this so that I have my, this one has the pearls. I wish I could have had that a little differently. I might have to change that because So what are you doing here? I'm just separating knits and pearls on mm -hmm. dub double points. Okay. What I really wanted on that back needle there is I wanted my knits to be in front is why I, I was looking at that funny. See how my knits are in the back? Mm -hmm. I would prefer if those knits were in front. So let's see if I can redo that one. If that happens to you guys, just put them back on your needle and redo it. It's always a good thing to mess it up on camera, and then if someone else does the same mix-up, they'll know how to fix it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, which is always good. I was watching a Jenny Doan video, and she, she had hers, well, she had not quite gotten it right, and then she showed us how to fix it on camera, and I'm like, that's cool, just in case. So that one goes in front. What are you doing here? I'm doing the same exact thing that mm -hmm. I just did before, but okay. I'm putting my knit stitches in front and my okay. pearls in the back. Okay. Before I had my pearls in the front and knits in the back. And you'll see why it's important to keep those with the knits in the front in just a second. I'll help you with it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. So then we have our two little swatches. All right, I can put that one down, okay? And if we look right here, we have whoop, knit stitches here and purl stitches here. So we're gonna put them face to face so they're kissing, all right? And then we're gonna check our stitch count. We have six on the back and six on the front. And then guess what you do? It's so cool. You take a tapestry needle, just like you would do with the normal Kitchener, Put that tapestry needle on your yarn and if you look at our little Kitchener stitch cheat sheet it had it has a little setup and we start by doing insert your needle as up to purl and I got my working yarn insert the needle as if to knit There you go. And then you go knit, off, purl. That purl, off, knit. Knit, off, purl. You used to do this six times? Yeah. One second. I'm trying not to lose my things. And you saw that when I stop on the Kitchener stitch, I never stop until I finish this last one. I go knit off purl, purl off knit. And if I have to stop, I stop at the end of that repeat. Otherwise, you'll never know where you were and you'll get your Kitchener stitch all jacked up. And that is not a good plan, I'm just saying. And purl. Oh, don't 
you do? Curl off it. You need like four hands. And then knit off pearl. Got off, I got off by one stitch somewhere here. Let me take a look at it. And I, and I got it caught around there. There you go. And then I'm, I'm, I got off by one stitch. So let me look and see what happened. If this happens, you just go backwards, stick them back on the needle. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I got it all messed up. Okay. Well, anyways, if you had done your Kitchener right, it would look fine. Let's see if we can do this one. Okay, so we go a pearl. I'm just checking my stitch count. I have pearl and knit. Let's see if we can do this side better. And then we go knit off pearl. Pearl off knit. And keeping your Keeping your working yarn in kind of not tight, but tight enough. Knit. There you go. Knit off pearl. You can always adjust it later. Pearl off knit. And let's see if this side looks better. Knit off pearl. There you go. And pearl off knit. And right down to the very end, we're going to go knit off. And then pearl off. Let's take a look here. There you go. Let's see if I got it. See how you got to kind of pull it? There you go. And then once it's blocked, do you see how the knit stitches line right up there? Isn't that cool? The back I have to redo because see I messed it up. That happens. But, yeah. You just sometimes you have to do it twice. So if this happens, I would just go ahead and take it out. Find your... Well, actually, okay, so if that happened, since I used the same working yarn all the way around, I would have to take the whole thing out and start over. But it's a small little part, and you could easily do it. But if you're doing it and you're paying attention and you're not on camera, you can do it easily and have it work. But that's what it looks like on the other side. And what I love about my swatch here was that it's not very thick. That's pretty cool, huh? And do you see how it matches on both sides? The knit stitches are right in here. This one needs to be, it's like the tension is a little funky. So I would play with it just a little bit and get it, I mean, with some blocking and putting it in water, I might mess around with these edges or not exactly perfect, but it's as close as you can get for a perfect seamless join in one by one ribbing. <laughs> And it's like, oh, it's totally cool. So on my little swatch that I did here, I messed it up on the back side. But you could see right here on this, this front side that it is really nice. And it looks way better than using a three-needle bind off when done properly. Then um, that way you don't have this flaring. Look at how flared out this is if you put it with a three-needle bind off. And then if you look here, do you see how it doesn't match up all the way? Yeah, doesn't match up all the way. And then of course with the three needle bind off, when you bind off, you're making that pearl ridge. So that is gonna be something visible that you don't have to worry about looking at or trying to hide or something like that. So don't forget, when you're trying new skills, pick three skills that are using the same skill set. I mean, three projects that have the same skill set. And then try to practice for an hour a day and then the um what was number two <laughs> no more than two skills no more than two skills right at a time 
no more than two skills at a time. And the reason why I like no more than two new skills at a time is if you get too frustrated when you're trying to do projects because you have too many skills, you may give up and never finish. And you may give up on knitting altogether. And that would be such a shame because <laughs> there's so much to learn in knitting. And it's so good for you to use your brain and think about creating. And I don't know, I just think it's really fun. So I hope this helped you be able to join your one by one ribbing and try that Kitchener stitch. Don't do it on camera for the first time. That would be bad. <laughs> I haven't, I, I've actually, that was my second time doing it, but it's pretty cool. I really, really like it. It's so awesome. So now we need to look at our winners for today, for yep. this last week, right? Mm -hmm. And this was our winning color. Yep. It's Preparos and it's Arroyo and it is a sport weight yarn by Malabrigo, Marina Wool. And let's see who our winner is. Agnes Zelger. Yay, Agnes, you won. You won a little Rios. Yeah, maybe you could make yourself a hat. It's kind of cold outside, it'd probably be handy. So all you have to do is get in touch with us and give us your address and we can get this sent out in the mail to you. So awesome. Um, did I miss anything else, Jim? Oh, this next week, we are going to just have a really short uh, get together. And I believe we will be working, talking about our Knit Club project. So for those of you who are part of the Knit Club, your Knit Club project should have been sent to you by now. You should have received them. And I hope you've gotten started. And don't forget to look at the YouTube videos because each time I do a new section, I talk about how to do it and I get you started. So using those videos may clear up a lot of things for you as you're going along because I try to think about everything that might cause confusion for you and then I show it on film. I knit it so that you can see and you can just follow along with me. Those are on the members page actually, not YouTube, so they're on the members oh, right, page. right, right, yeah. on the members page yeah. for our Knit Club members. So it's totally awesome. Um, what else, Jim? Did I miss anything else? Well, Agnes was watching today, so she's... Yay! she's a, yeah, she Congratulations, won. Agnes. You'll love Rios. If you, if you guys out there haven't tried Rios, which is the worsted weight, or this Papyrus, which is the sport weight, it's also called Arroyo. Um, the colorway is Papyrus. And it is machine washable merino that's super nice. It's one of the first yarns that I ever knit with, and I have literally made hundreds of projects with this particular yarn. It's fantastic. So, and a very pretty color. I like that colorway too. And for this next week, you guys don't forget to vote and let me know which one, Tide Pool, which is purple, or the Corals, which is uh, multi-peach and blue and yellow. Very pretty. Love this bamboo yarn. It's lovely new colorways. That's why I wanted to share it with you. So you guys have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. And I hope you're all doing well and don't work yourselves to get death trying to get ready for Christmas. Remember, you know, what it's about and share time with your family and I will see you soon. You take care now.